typical answer as well to that Corky. So there's a world where that could just show up. It's going to be the Renekton here from CDZ. So denying him on that pick. And yeah, the Ash has been left open. It's been basically taken away all day. Uh... I feel like you could go for like that Braum Denial on the side of LNG. Uh, Leona is out of the pool already. So see what LNG decides to lock in here. They're going to lock that Lucian in. Potentially keep it open as a flex pick. I don't want to see a, a, another ADC picked up here. Uh, <laughs> hovering a bunch of different things, but we'll see. Um, just trying to rack my brain. I guess things like the Zyra is up and available as well. Jungler-wise, yeah. there's a lot of AP junglers up. Yeah, I mean, LNG don't have to lock AD carry now, but if they want to keep, keep their cards a little close to their chest, they can do. So the reason that um, LNG are picking up that Lucian is because the Tristana's already gone, and the Lucian does well into the Corky, so it's a matchup which Scout uh, could win that. You can lock in something like the Zeri for care instead, which seems to do pretty okay into that Lucian. So if you're picking for individual matchup, you can pick the Zeri. If you're picking for overall value, you can pick that Corky. This Braum, we did say, very, very powerful with the Ash. The power of Ash and Braum is that Braum doesn't bring engage, so Ash brings it for him. Now, what that does mean is that Braum can play defensive while Ash starts firing the first shots through at the same time. What that also means is that if you hit someone, the, Bra the, the Braum passive comes up very, very quickly after that point. Incredibly strong duo. It's what we've seen top esports prioritize, the rest of the league prioritize too, to kill that first combo very, very effectively. Uh, we did wonder whether Kerr was going to go towards the Corky or the Zeri. Of course, the Yone also one of the better early matchups too that was on the table. It goes towards that Corky, the question was, do you pick for lane, um, the Zeri can be better in that Lucian, or do you pick for the game, which the Corky tends to be better in terms of individual carry? He had a pretty good game on that in the game one, even if he wasn't game determining in his fights, he still got a lot of gold, did a hell of a lot of damage, so he's happy to pick that up again. Yeah, I think that's going to be the comfortable one here. Now moving over to LNG, finally get himself a jungler, or hovering a jungler who will be able to actually achieve a little bit more for the team, locking in that Zyra. I was surprised that the Zyra made it this far into the draft. Now, expecting things are probably brand Lilia just to get banned away here from the side of LNG and just pinch Milky Way off those AP junglers. He did play the, uh, the Lilia last game. So, yeah, I mean, you know he's, you know it's in his wheelhouse. So I feel like brand Lilia are probably the safest bets on the ban pool here. Yeah, because the um, FX they don't have overly large engage. Uh, they have themselves... Um, you know, the, the Ash Arrow, the Braum can be follow-up engagement, it's not primary engage. You want another source of engage from somewhere. They could also be looking for AD jungle. They could, well, no, the Kindred, the, you know, okay. So, out there, Thorpe could also be Milky Way's Kindred, one of his iconic picks, and then ZDZ goes towards the Cannon. That could also be another pick True. if LNG block in. So if LNG, here's, 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 the, here's the prediction here. If LNG go towards Kassansei on four and they don't give counter pick, uh, they shouldn't do that. They shouldn't do that. But if they lock him, or they, they if they, if FPX double bans top lane and Zuka goes towards something tanky like the Kassansei, or they predict that they're going to do that on five, they could lock in Cannon kindred on 4-5 for FPX, because that would also work their way through the problems, especially if they think, hey, we're not going to get a, a primary AP carry jungle. Let's go to the AP in top side. Let's get a better carry in towards uh, jungle. With the brand still available, they can do either, though. It's basically just whatever they're feeling at that point. Divvying up the roles between ZDZ and Milky Way. ZDZ will have to blind pick that top lane anyway, so it might be on him to say what matchup he wants. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be the brand, I think, for Milky Way, but I... Also kind of low-key hope, but I mean, there's so many ADCs if you lock in that Kendon brand, uh, Kendon Kindred, because you've got Corky, Ash, and then a Kindred. Um, yeah. I mean, things like Baron <laughs> and Objectives are good down very quick, but you are kind of almost hyper-fixating on, on one uh, one facet of like of play. So probably just going to see, yep, yeah, Hunger himself onto his support. He had an amazing game on this Rakan last game. Um, isn't going to go towards it, actually locks in the Alistair here for themselves. I am surprised at that because the Alistair does lose lane very hard to Ash Bomb. Like, very, very hard. All you are saying here is, okay, I want to get the heck out of here as soon as possible. Ezreal, you keep farming and I'll roam. FPX, now they get the choice between that jungle and that top lane. As you said, they have some options. I think with the um, Alistair locked in, you're very happy to go towards the brand because once you get to that Rylize, the Alistair can barely play the game. Um, as soon as his combo is down, he's just stuck being slowed around the place. So I think that informs this pick here. I would have liked to see Milky Way Kindred is one of his legendary picks. He played it recently too, um, as well. He's, he's picked it up a couple of times in this summer. Goes towards that one, and now that means that ZDZ he can maybe look towards uh, something blind pickable in that top side. The Nar, there aren't that many answers to it. When you band away that Jax and the Jace, there isn't too much which can threaten you towards that top side. Zucker could go for a last pick Camille if he wanted to, if that is going to be that lock-in. Instead, that he goes towards that TF. 
and that's just going to be returned back to that first game. I feel that's quite bold though, locking in the uh, locking in the TF. Now, already, you, your engage is entirely based on this Ash Borom for the side of FPX. Uh, you do obviously have like a long range gold card once that rapid fire cannon comes in, but I feel like the Nas, it, it would have been safer, would have had some follow up mm. with that engage and LNG, they seem to somewhat agree on that front. They're looking to lock in the NAR for themselves in the top yeah. lane. And honestly, I think I prefer LNG's draft here. I, I, there's some tools on FBX, but I really like, I mean, we've seen what uh, Brand can do. Corky Ash should be able to tidy up any fight that he, he kind of enables, but I just worry they're very squishy on FBX. And eventually a single true shot barrage, if they're caught in a, in a chokehold, will just force them away from a fight. They, they just they're going to yeah. get poked out too low. So if FPX play a similar early game to the one they did in game one, with a really good first couple of ultimates of the game um, from ZDZ, and if Doctam is as accurate as the last time we saw his Ash as well, he's had some fantastic games on this recently, then I like what FPX brings to the table. If yeah. they don't manage to do that, and then Nar gets to choke hold in a side lane, and you manage to get Zyra onto multiple items, then it gets a bit more problematic. So. Um, FPX, I think they need to have another solid early game. They still have that Ash Brawn. They still have that Gold Card Twisted Fate Ultimate as well to stop picking off people. L LNG, they didn't have a great game one in regards to that. That In specifically that aspect, they were randomly walking into Fog of War. They weren't quite able to support each other. And despite Hung having a great Rakan game to try and stop those Gold Cards being the worst case scenario, it was bad enough. It reached the late game where FPX clutched it out yet again. And LNG, who are 4-0 who and o after taking down both of our two MSI representatives from this year in Top Esports and BLG have found themselves a game down versus FPX, who realistically shouldn't have even won the two series which they have on their win column right now. They ended up clutching them out. But that is just the nature of FPX. It's the nature of the LPL sometimes to... Sometimes fate doesn't have it nearly as uh, to the script as you might have thought just before these games have aired. So FPX looking to close this one out. They have the playmaking tools. They have that early game. Let's see if they have their footwork and their feet in the right place. So we we'll get through onto the rift and see how the crowd feels. Relatively quiet that one, if I'm gonna be honest with you. Did you um? Did you did you like the Animus Squad sky? I love that the Animus Squad. So screen. loud. That's so, so cool. cool. That we haven't even you know we, the, 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 there's a brawn. There's a chance of a level one. Look, look, we the both of us, and I know this because I've been playing with you, um, and Joe as well. Much been playing. Like, I can't remember if I've talked to the other casters about it, but we have been playing so much Animus Squad. We're playing so much of Swarm right now. Yesterday, I ended up beating all of the individual bosses on Extreme, which is one of the best achievements in my career so far. I'm very proud of that. Um, <laughs> Swarm looks for that level one. Not going to be able to get that much, though. Good turnaround from LNG. FBX, they would have looked for that level one uh, with that Brawn, but they're being uh, chunked out a little bit more than they wanted. I mean, it does slow uh, Weiwei's start off just due to the fact that they, they popped a couple of plants. So... I mean, there's a there's a small win off the back of that one, but life obviously not going to be particularly happy with how much damage they ate right at the beginning. And same for Care as well. Care also getting pretty low down there. Yeah. But I mean, FPX they they have this Braum lane, so you know the level level one's going to be pretty much in their comfort versus this Alistair. It's not really too much LNG are going to be able to do about that one. Also, you've got Wayway pathing away from bot lane too. So he's just said, look, bot lane, you are. D deal with it. Fend for yourselves. Be okay with that one. So it's going to be Gala trying to um, play weak side in this game. Farm up as best as possible. If he can get to the Ashgun, they're going more than that. Wow, they're going straight in. Yeah, they're going straight up to deck down, but I just oh, don't no. know if you can get Doc Dam that like that. Like, he's got the Braum. He's got the comfort. It's very hard to find a kill there. Yeah. They do get the barrier and the heal out, which is way better than I thought they would do. They get themselves a, uh, a good a good, good level two. Considering that I consider um, Alistair to be heavy countered by the Ash Brawn, because if you go into a play and you don't get the kill, most of the time you get put, you get punished with um, the, the Brawn stun, and then the approach velocity from Ash means you can never escape. Uh, he gets out of that with a lot better trade than I thought he would. They get themselves some good HP, get themselves the summoners. They only blow themselves um, Hung's double summoners, which I means, I guess okay because you have both summoners and Gala still which means that this is at least a playable lane 
See that Weibo just finishes his clear. A little bit slow going from bot to top. He finishes it just beyond three minutes. Normally expect about 2.54 is the, the highest time I think I've seen in the LPL so far. But still, getting himself onto the map. Trying to now contest with that bot scuttle to allow Gala and Hung to have a bit more river vision for themselves. Yeah, doing his, uh, doing his due diligence. He actually might just look for the gank angle here, to be honest. Looks like that is going to break away. They've already used the Braum shield. It looks like FPX are just going to be able to move away from this one. And now Zucker. Oh, no. I think he might be a little bit cooked here. Gets himself caught out. Does get hit by the sun. Jumps over the W. So the passive isn't going to burn. And now Zucker gets hyper. Gets a whole bunch of heap of damage. Flashes away from the Q from Milky Way. Does oh, eat a so little that's... bit more. He's okay. Oh, the Doran shield healing. <laughs> It, I mean, there's no, um, there's no Leandris or Fader's Ashes just yet, so Zucker manages to get the outplay. The flash, the Q flash, E stun lands, but the W doesn't after because Zucker is midway through his hop and then he uses his flash to escape the next threat. Very lucky to get out of that one, and importantly for him, manages to teleport back to lane to catch this big wave. If he had lost this big wave early, that could have been the end of his laning phase where TF starts to take off. He's already behind a fair amount of CS, but at least that will start to even up a little bit with that big wave coming up under turret. So I got a tough game one. Uh, he ended up being something like one and six, something like that towards the end of the game. Can't remember the exact KDA, but it w it wasn't pretty. I think a lot of that was the fact that he was sole frontline, uh, hung on the Rakan, was being engaged. It's hard to be a frontline in the same way as a Braum, an Alistair, or Leona can be, because uh, you're not quite as tanky in the same way. And it, he ended up getting punished an awful lot. Now, Zucker, I think, has been the unsung hero for LNG, so to see him struggle like that, it, it's a bit, bit of a rarity on the whole. I, I've got uh, a lot of respect from him and what he's done, even in... Um, some of the less powerful moments from LNG as a team need to see him continue on that kind of form rather than what we saw in game one. If LNG wants to mount a comeback, they wouldn't exactly want to be playing um, with a top laner off form. Against FPX, he seems to be very much on form. Oh, Dot Damp finds himself caught up by the headbutt, pulverized, a whole heap of damage, has to flash. Still has that barrier available to him, but half his HP just overstayed for the plate earlier and uh, pays the price for it. Hung is having a much better laning phase in early game than I thought he would do. Uh, the Alistair into the Ash Braum, I've seen it lose games so many times to the point where I've seen Alistair last picks into, into Ash Braum saying, okay, we'll just survive the laning phase, we'll get team fights, and they don't survive that laning phase. Uh, but they're doing more than surviving this. That level two combo has opened up so many options for Gala and Hung and FBX who would have liked to re have a, um, a recursion of that um, early game they had in game one is not going to as easily happen at all. That bot lane already going much worse for them than they would have liked. They are going to get towards level six at some point Ooh, in the next they didn't see Wait, is alone. They're going to spot him out. Cares in the area as well. Let's get a little bit of poke off onto Weiwei. That uh, brand passive going. Weiwei actually eating so much damage just passively from the brand in the pit. Does look like LNG though had the, uh, had the man advantage. So they're going to be able to start with these three grubs in their pocket. This time, FPX not going to be the ones picking those up. As actually, we do see the Zucker. all in here from Zucker. ZDZ gets himself gold carded, but it just eats so much damage on the way out. They do a bit of work here. Milky Way doesn't have six, most crucially, as LNG. Oh, that was very close for them. Funniest thing about that play, Milky Way just leashes the grubs, gets the passive at all three, and the reason why Brand ends up being such a fast clear of those grubs works out in favor, weirdly for LNG. They walk out, um, not being able to get the kill into ZDZ. I wonder if Scout could have finished, uh, flashed over to finish that one off, but I think maybe because it's very early game, you don't have ranks in your in your E just yet, wouldn't have been able to get towards uh, a second dash out, so it would have been a trading a one for one, so I do understand not going towards that in the same kind of degree. TFL is going to be used to get back towards top lane, so the first ult of the game for ZDZ, much like in the last game, not going to be used offensively by the Twist of Fate himself. Um, so LNG, much happier with this early game compared to that last one so far. Milky Way is back towards top side. He does have his ult. Zucker doesn't have a rage bar, so that might be another way of lost the turret to try and put ZDZ ahead of the game. Yeah, Weiwei did make his way over, but the Pillar of Flame makes its connection onto Zucker. So Zucker... Gonna be sitting quite happy here with that fleet footwork. Heals back up and just catches this wave. No real contest because of Weiwei's rotation over. And now Zucker has that rage bar filled up and Hung is in the area, potentially looking for a gank angle onto ZDZ, who is flashless Wait, right now. Flash? They are oh, gonna see him on. out. He has to get this gold card beautifully onto Hung, but gets caught by everything. He's just trying to make the run away, but this time no Milky Way, no backup. That is gonna be an easy pickup here for Zucker. He's just making sure he picks that kill up. Ash Arrow goes a little bit wide. 
And yeah, really, really nicely played there by Hung, just being all over the map. I mean, I, it, it, that is just cruel timing. Milky Way completes his recall just before that. Scout jumping forwards has all, but Sakaya's turning it back. Oh no, he's in real danger here. The Valkyrie forward, Kaya secures the kill. Scout fires his ult in the wrong direction and Kaya gets the solo kill in mid lane. Scout, who he thought had been on such good form recently, has uh, just had a little bit of a spaghetti incident. It's everywhere over on the floor as he ends up dashing forwards into his own death. The, the thing about this matchup is that Lucian wants to hop over the Foss Bomb. Doesn't manage to do that. Well, let's just go back to this trade again. He doesn't have that high mana, but he has enough mana for a full rotation. I think the Foss Bomb was just down there. And Bidios jumps straight into a big one. The Foss Bomb comes down. Scout puts the ult in the wrong direction. I think even if the ult's on target, I think he loses this. The fact that he doesn't use that dash to get out of that big damage is a core part of this Lucian matchup, which he just misplays. Yeah, that was really, really unfortunate for him. Heavily, heavily caught out on that one as a... It's an answer back for the side of FPX because with that uh, ZDZ kill earlier. The great rotation but caught him out. Felt like LNG had finally kind of got their foot in the door after the last game. Now, yeah, it was, Dragon uh, it spawning was up. It was slam shut in that first game. Quite yeah, well, yeah, you know. I don't know if it was slam shut. It, it felt like a more gentle close in their face. Did, did you see Weiwei's early game? I think, it, it, particularly True. for him, it was sure. Okay, maybe not for the whole of LNG, but that poor Cougar in the jungle, um, showcasing exactly why Nidalee is not always picked by all of our teams. So, but yes, Dragon has spawned up. Um, you can definitely talk about that one too, as uh, FPX get themselves into the bottom side river first. Milky, we're going to burn this one down one uh, very, very effectively. Wait, wait. Is seen recalling for the scene of the crime. Uh, Scout does jump over the Fast Bomb this time, and look, it's a better trade for him. Turns out how that's how this matchup works. Uh, it was pretty cool, but yeah, it, you can definitely see more potential with well, it. Well, he's given up a kill now. It's not even. He's given up the steel caps. I'm just yeah, saying. True. If you jump, if you, look, if you don't jump over the Foss Bomb, it's not good. That's the reason that the Lucian's picked into it. You want to be using that dash um, very aggressively to make sure you win those trades. You can sometimes as a jungler, by the way, um, it's the secret tech. Um, this is why you want to know these lane matches. You can jump onto them as they jump forwards, trying to dodge out in a skill shot and kill them. Dog oh, damn they know where there. They hit the wrong person, but the cow has been caught. Hung, gold carded, locked down, and he will be gifted to Dog Dam. Dog Dam secures that kill nice and beautifully. And Grub number two is going to go over to FPX as they all do eat a true shot barrage. So maybe a little bit of damage is coming in. I mean, Weiwei just yeah, wants to get the one it. and he gets the summons. I think that maybe LNG could afford this. They got themselves a lot of good damage through Weiwei's uh, Strangled Thorns and Gala's ultimate there. They're choosing not to. Uh, so there's going to be the full grubs going over. Smite now available for Milky Way, so he's going to be completely fine taking that one and evening it up. I'm surprised that LNG didn't look to contest for that one um, a little more. I love the setup for this last play. Um, if you're an Ash team, it is a team sport um, trying to get this pick to work in the upper, upper end of its potential because what you do is you win through the bot side, you put pink wards down the bot half of the map, and then you use that to have this blanket of Fog of War where the arrow gets the speed up on its travel path. Get out of Fog of War and you have very little time to respond. To it. It's much easier to dodge Ash Arrows if you have a ward on its flight path before it reaches you. Dogtam stood in that fog of war, gets that very easy kill. Um, weirdly, gone to the support he wasn't aiming for, but hey, you take those. Get the flash out of Weiwei as well. And Hung, who has been on the roam, is still in a bit of danger now. Pyroclasm put out. Oh, Weiwei eats the passive as well. They both just chunked out. Like, any attempt on this tower that they could have done with the Brand. three man is being completely denied by Milky Way. Brand. Yeah, um, they were trying to play on the strong side of the map there. Milko, it's, it's a good play. It's a good play. It just says, okay, I will chunk out both of you, so you can't make that big play. Zucker getting himself this hyper procs through. Mega's not too far off, but he's hit by a Foss Bomb. I think it's more damage than he counted on. Care now turning their trade around a little more. And you know, Care, uh, I started off this um, this series by saying that Care has struggled a lot in summer, and I still think that has been true if you look across the weight of his games. But recently, on uh, particularly the Lucian is where he found his feet, but I think the Corky has been... Uh, quite a powerful pick for him in these, these two games so far. He has been doing more and more work for FPX. Do I think he's an elite mid laner within the LPL? No, I don't think he's there right now, but I do think that he has become more and more um, serviceable for FPX, considering how some of his games, particularly um, when FPX dropped out of spring playoffs, a lot of people pointed fingers at Care and how poor his Azir play was, and in summer he had some very poor moments there too. The fact that he is being more and more of a factor in these games is better to even out the profile of FPX's performance. Yes, absolutely. 
starting to step up a little bit more as the time goes on, as the clock does tick away. Now, this game, 13 minutes in, it has been relatively tame compared to our last game. As ZDZ finds himself in a light trade here versus uh, Zucker, but Zucker now with the Mert treads. Doesn't get gold carded all that long. So it's going to make his life work, no harder. reaction. Zucker, uh, yeah, the Mert treads make it really easy, and then. Um, the fact that TF has a passive that um, prints money and he's behind 300 gold is not what FPX wanted, considering that they tried to gank Zucker like a million times. Didn't yeah. work out, did it? He's now ahead 400 gold. Zucker, who had a poor game one, all things considered, um, ends up now taking another turret play. He can just Meganar jump out of turret if he wants to. Use the full combo, jumps out. That's what you do as Meganar. You have all the base stats. You just use the burst combo. Um, the thing about Meganar compared to Minionar is that... Hang on, we'll have to stop talking about that as Cam maybe getting engaged onto you. I know going to be just about safe there. Dogtam has ult. This could be a fight. Yeah, this could be very dangerous, although Care eats a fair chunk of a culling. Not enough for it to be really dangerous. Milky Way is just going to start up the Rift Herald. The side of FPX, and that Pyroclasm is back and available to them. Gala making his way over. This is going to be a potential fight here for this Herald, although I think they're a little bit too slow to the play. FPX able to pick that one up for free. Remember, Dot Dam still has his it's ultimate like, uh... up and available as ZDZ. Uh, there's, a, there's a knot in that corner. And he is going to have to pop the ghost just to break away. Ash Arrow thrown down Ooh. and nothing really gained. Yeah, Zucker like getting so much in this individual matchup. ZDZ, um, even in that last game, got given a lot of gold and he struggled in some of the 1v1 matchups. That's probably one of the big criticisms we had about FPX. ZDZ has been added late on into Summit onto this roster. For those of you who uh, missed out on that one, he's going to pop that ult. So it does mean that FPX are going to uh, see the movements across the rest of the map. This is ZDZ's third team in a year. Uh, he played on Weibo, then RNG, and now he's over on FBX. So him slotting into this roster, he really has been the gun for hire in the LPL. Uh, probably not what he wants to, to out of this year. He'd prefer some stability. He's looking for stability in this series, too. He's had some great moments, but he has had these moments, too, which he's not really been able to stand up in the 1v1. Well, they actually did catch the strangle fawns onto Care. Care is able to dash away, though. W comes out from the side of Milky Way just to clear that one off, and Tower does go down. Ultimately, FBX are starting to struggle a little bit more in this game. Gold still even between both teams. Dragon is up on the map, though. So I expect to see these teams start to move towards this area. FBX were able to get that first dragon of the game. Cloud Dragon on its own, not particularly the most valuable. But, you know, a little bit more movement speed always helps. I'm, I've actually always been an advocate for Cloud Dragon ever since it yeah, first came out. Yeah, just the basic one? Yeah, the, the oh, original form, what I've it, always loved the, it. The, uh, the original Cloud Dragon was pretty poor. That no, was I, 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 I refuse to like, hear you. La la la. <laughs> the wind is too strong. Yeah. The cloud, I can't see the clouds. They're in front of me. Uh, well, anyway, uh, that will be the object to desire in the next minute or two. There's um, the Herald for FPX to summon up, which they're doing right now in the mid lane. So LNG going to try and wave clear through this one. They do still have the Ash Braum. If they get themselves an arrow and it doesn't land onto Gull, I mean, jumping like that is, is bold there, buddy. There is the Ash Braum combo. See if LNG gets themselves a flank. Zucker Ooh, coming Zucker. in. Meganon not quite just there yet. Does have flash. See what he can do. They know he's there. They can see everything on the ward. CDZ just getting some damage off. But actually eats more himself. The tower stands most crucially. But I'm just going to clear out some of this vision. Hawk up. See where LNG are. So FPX. Trying to move in. But it's very hard to move in on that. Come scout dragon right now but yeah teleport coming in everybody's joining in zdz's two chunk i think this is a fight for fpx don't want and they definitely don't strangle fawns go down life fails as well as he's taken out do you see a gold card onto zucker just to zone him off the tower should crumble here in the mid lane so at least fpx answer out with something yeah, no, that tower take is nice for FPX because they get something from it. It does take them the, the Herald and it does cost them that Dragon. Uh, of course, life goes down in the extended play as well. They still have themselves the Ash Arrow. Gala has cleanse and has Flash. Wouldn't have to... Well, I was wondering if he wouldn't have to blow either one. He was a little bit afraid of who else was going to come out of Fog of War. Blows the cleanse early just to play it safe. I think that is normally the right decision if you're not certain. Gala making sure that there's no advantage to be gained there. LNG... Um, Already compared to the last game, much better spot. They've gotten onto the sideline turrets. They've gotten into these objective plays. They have themselves um, a much more solid early game heading into the mid lane. ZDZ chunked out by Zucker and then by Gala. Gala gets a huge amount of damage down early and then, of course, life gets caught out.
by a wayward route and uh, goes down for his troubles of turning up towards this objective fight. LNG much better fight setup this time and I um, really want to praise Zucker. Zucker getting so many good trunks onto CDZ throughout the last few minutes and um, it reminds you that while Meganar might have the most flashy moments in regards to the burst plays, the consistent DPS of Mini Nar is effectively a mini AD carry is very, very high. Zucker, when he is now ahead in this matchup too, is going to be a threat onto this Twisted Fate, especially if you use the, the DPS and the mobility of Hyper to get on top of that TF and then threaten off with the final burst of the Meganar. That's how you get those really nasty plays, and that's why you're going to have to see a lot of respect paid by ZDZ, which is a problem, because FPX would like to get in pressure through those side lanes with the lead. Yeah. That's a good flash from Doctown, is it enough? Yeah, well, I mean, Hung's losing a lot of HP here to the Ash. That's an easy kill. He's in danger, though. They come in and save the day. They use ZDZ? the Destiny to keep the pressure up onto Gala. Gala's caught by the gold card. That's going to be ZDZ getting his redemption arc. He Destiny's forwards, decides not to go any further for the kill. And FPX just find two kills beautifully punished. Hey, Doctam just turns and burns, gets himself a huge play onto Hong, forces the flash out. Maybe Hong thought he'd just go, oh, it'll be, it'll be just the flash out and we'll disengage. This is the problem about playing the Alistair into stuff like the Ash or the Braum. If you go for the engage and you don't end the fight, you get chased down very easily by that consistent slow Doctam. Huge damage coming through, fantastic play from him on the Ash. Um, he gets to, uh, Gets out that dodge on the um, True Shot Barrage. Tries to clear out this wave, and you can see how aggressively Hung and Gala want to play it. This flash is really, really good, and that's when Hung realizes this is really messed up. He doesn't have the kill combo from the rest of his team. Gala tries to turn the damage around and at least make it a one-for-one. -one. Doesn't oh. work. Care dies in the side lane, and uh, that's a sad situation. You gotta take care when you're in the side lanes. Ah, no, ah. that's good. You know what was even better? When Care was playing Annie, he had the Care Bear as an ultimate. Oh, that's so that. good. It, it's great. I like that one. He also, also my, it, was, it was great, and then he missed it onto three club people, and it was the saddest moment in my casting career <laughs> as the Care Bear was, was, was very, very sad. Hip right? It was very sad. <laughs> oh, that is uh Do you have any other sad. favorite name puns? Do you have any favorite ones? Any, any ones from memory? I'm trying to remember if... Uh, no, Bro, just, I now can't even remember what I had for breakfast any. today. And that yeah, wasn't that long I, ago. I mean, it would be great if we could have Scout and Teemo at some point for the Scout's code. That'd yes, be great. that would uh, be good. Yeah. Um, I, there, so there were some really fun ones. So, so there's Wei Wei in the game right now. There's also jungler, long-time jungler of RNG, now on BLG, there's Wei. So you can have Wei versus Wei Wei, and the coach of BLG, which Wei is now playing for, is Big Wei. So you'd have Wei Wei, Wei, and Big Wei. This, we have like a whole multiverse of Weis. Um, I mean, we... Which is, it's a lot. <laughs> uh, so if anyone who doesn't know my my story i've been covering the uk scene for a very very long time we had a lot of dance at one Shit, point we had time. three dance at one point it was dan dan and dan i remember yeah, rem as well what that's great yeah we had three dance at one point i was also around in the wild west of that scene where names <laughs> were not vetted so <laughs> i oh, would not say the wrong yeah. broadcast but there was a wild west of the yeah. scene at one point no. and we Funnily had some enough. pretty fun names Funnily enough, the first time I ever met you was at 2018 EU Masters, the very first one, because you were you were there at the venue. And that was while I was just, I was a little scrub at university watching watching my League of Legends before I picked up the microphone. I remember watching you all the way back then. It's been a long time. Fro that Frog and Cassie appear play. Oh, oh yes. Great times. Great times. Yes. For those of you remember that one. That's yeah, a anyway, highlight of my career. Completely different side of the god, but yeah. <laughs> but that was uh, it was a fun time. Bit of history. See if FPS can finish off a bit of history themselves. Uh, well, it will be verging on it in this kind of upset, this kind of moment. FPS looking to take this Baron down. Great true shot barrage coming though from LNG. And it uh, does mean that that poke coming through. Doctor, I'm not in the best place to fight. They need to be careful on the retreat. Oh, well, uh, you say that and then the Pillar of Flame hit free. Uh, yeah, two. turns out that Brand still exists too, lest we forget. <laughs> yeah. Brand, it's so weird. Like, a couple years ago, if you went, oh, in 2014, uh, sorry, 2024, well, not 2014, I wish. Uh, 2024, uh, AP Jungle is is the meta. I would I would immediately go, oh, so things like Nidalee, Elise. I wouldn't go Zyra Brand. Gratis. Like, the, the yeah. meta is so <laughs> bizarre for this at the moment. Now, Care doing a whole heap of damage to Hung, chunking him out, but I do think it's still too dangerous for FPX yeah. to full commit to this Baron. They agree, and they do just back off. Now, it's going to be a Chemtech soul. So speaking of uh, yep. rough souls, not particularly the best, although a bit of tenacity won't go amiss versus I, yeah, all the, of this. Yeah, that will help. And this is why FPX said, look, Dragon's up. Let's not give that for free. They just keep going back to the Baron. They don't want LNG to split open the map. They are low HP. Wait, we have to flash in. This is getting quite low from FPX. Good arrow! 
Oh, there it is. The Baron secured. FPX now getting jumped onto. There's the headbutt. Pole Vons the two. Milky Way flashes out. Can he get the ult off? He does a whole heap of damage. The rest of the team now limping away. Care has flashed. No mana to Valkyrie, but he should be able to break away from this one. As we do see ZDZ getting jumped on underneath the tower. Does he have flash? Yes, he does. Ghost used as well. Just to break away. FPX, they give up one, but they get the Baron. Yeah, no, I think it's too dead if you can include life as well. So it's going to be LNG taking down a couple. But once again, FPX playing well around the objectives and around um, kind of the setup. Now, they don't have the side lane pressure they had in the last game. And they don't have themselves the overall lead which they had in the last game. It does mean that LNG find themselves an entrance in here. I, I thought 100% this was going to be way, way, at least flashing in for a strangle Arrow's fantastic. Dogtown, fantastic arrow from him. Means that there is no smite still available. Also, the Braum knockup potentially would have stopped the blast going if it came in earlier as well. Potentially could have interrupted that one there. Um, Milky Way and Life, they both go down, but honestly, that is a heist which they will be proud of all the same. Dragon wasn't taken during this series of events. FPX tried to pull LNG away from that. He successfully did so, but they will need to now uh, have themselves another good objective fight. They haven't really set up the map with the Baron just yet, so LNG potentially could look for themselves another big team fight. Yeah, looks like for now, they are just getting some level of control around the area. Ash Arrow now back up and available. Pyroclasm also available. Waiting on that Glacial Fisher, which will probably be the next big team fight tool as oh, they immediately balls. open up onto Care. Great block. Care has to flash away just to not get caught out. Did you see uh, Zucker losing a lot of HP to Milky Way's full combo? And yeah, he's chunked. Gold card hit Zucker as well. Burns a lot. Oh, he's just Gonzo. Pop goes the weasel. Down he goes. Oh, uh, that's, uh, that's a very dead Nar. Zucker getting zones uh, completely soloed out. And suddenly, FX with the remaining barrel buffs, but the, only the three grubs, they're going to be more than enough. That's suddenly a pick into an inhibitor and LNG. What, what do they get from this? They get a dragon. It's a second dragon. That's not worth it. FBX, um, normally we say around about the 30 to 35 minutes mark. That's when they start to, they really start locking in. They have all the items they need. They understand how the team comps work out. We saw this all the way through spring where they took big backdoor victories through some uh, intricate late late game play to have to really leave their mark on that spring split and suddenly in summer as well that facet of their gameplay has come back out to play again fbx um i'm getting a little bit worried for lng because feels like it's getting towards that late game again zucker um gets hit by the arrow no he oh, doesn't get hit by no. the arrow. dodges that on that but so why does he stay around you, you already dodged the arrow but that doesn't mean the threat's gone great combo coming out from milky way to get the passive onto him at least even if the um, stun doesn't fully connect and he just overstays. There's no one there to help him. He opens up this mid lane push. You are not going to be able to protect that mid lane anyway. All you're doing is spectating your towers falling. Why are you stood there? And that's the yeah. CDZ TF ultimate pulled out. Is there going to be a fight? I think so. Looks like they are just going to try and push forward. Baron has one out. This tower is still standing. So ultimately, they did get the mid lane inhibitor, which will give them a constant source of uh, pressure. But it does look like Scout was trying to jump forward. Care gets caught the out flash. by everything. And Zucker comes in on the flank. He's about to get Mega. FPX just kind of fumbled that one. Yeah, they overpushed. They used that TF ultimate to give some advanced warning on LNG, but they don't. I mean, TF ult doesn't reveal, reveal wards, doesn't reveal where they can come in from the flank, and Zucker pounces on that flank. He just made that mistake in the mid lane. Kind of makes up for it, I suppose, and that one by breaking FPX is pushing that bot side. They still have uh, three members in the enemy jungle, though. They've able to take some of those jungle camps. They're not in position to defend their own towers because of this, though. I guess they were probably losing this tower all the same because LNG have so many members up on the map, but. Um, yeah, FPX not going to be able to defend this turret. So that's going to be some more gold going up to LNG, who, uh, as we said, they are not behind in this game like they were in that first one. Cap blew that flash the last time. Gets caught somehow by uh, by Hung and that strangle thorns. The Rylai slow and the plant slow comes through from Zyra and suddenly Cap just oversteps. A lot of that's on Cap's positioning, thinking about it again. Uh, you just shouldn't have walked up that far without the flash. I do have to praise Hung, though. I think Hung has been very good for LNG this series. Constantly finding really clutch engages. I mean, back at the Baron Pit, you got the two-man Polv off. He, he's been really, really consistently good. Yeah. Uh, but Weiwei being on a champion has probably helped quite a lot in this game. Yes. <laughs> like, while Hung yeah, has LNG consistently looks so much got... better when they have five members. <laughs> right, right. But, like, Hung has consistently got really good engages. And then either the Strangle Fawns or the, uh, the tangle, tangle Barbs, I believe the E's called. Constantly locking people down on top of Hung. And this little jungle support duo has been really, really effective in fights for the side of LNG. 
I'm trying to remember if it's Grasping Roots. That might wait. I look, okay, I play so much Zyra in Arena, weirdly. I don't play her in Summoner's Rift. I'm just, I use her for the free I in Arena. It's, it's fun enough. But uh, the Strangle Thorns is the only. Is it Grasping Roots or is it Strangle? Yeah, I think Grasping Roots. Look, it's one of those things. All the same. Um, <laughs> just Google. Wait, wait. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's I, I should have done that. that. I should have. I should. I shouldn't have. I, yeah, I shouldn't have exposed my own uh, ignorance. I oh, look. I'm a color caster. I don't need to know the names of abilities. It's a play by play job. Uh, oh. You know, earlier on you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> Grasping roots is E. Thank you, machine. Grasping roots is E. I knew I had it right. In what? Hey, I got it right. Incredible. Wow. I, I should have trusted myself more. My confidence on full display that too. As uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Wait, wait. Uh, he's been having so much of an impact in this game. He still has his flash. He's not into a Leona this time, which was what we saw earlier in the day, just really making Zara's life hell. Every time the, the um, solar flare is up, you're flashing or you are dying. Uh, so, wait, wait. Now has himself those Seekers. AP junglers. Um, funnily enough, this was the thing that happened a number of years ago. If you look back to the 2020 meta when we still had the Runic Echoes jungle and, and stuff like that, we had like the Elise, the Gragas. Echo was a jungler back then too. Um, what would you ha what you'd have is you'd have the jungle item and then into oh. will stop that. It's going to be coming through from Hung. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to full commit any further. They do get a gold card off on the Hung. He loses <laughs> half his HP. But that is going to be it off the back of that one. Dragon spawns up in well, 30 seconds, so plenty of time to find an opening as Weiwei. He gets himself caught by the Pyroclasm. They throw everything down onto him. Milky Way's going to try and press forward. The True Shot Barrage hits onto Milky Way. Hung gets himself into the middle of everyone. Dogdam has to flash over the wall to break away from Zucker. In comes EDZ with the gold card to lock Zucker in place. Sterex burnt. Nah evolved. FPX force LNG away. They do heal up somewhat with the honey fruits as Gala's trying to find the damage onto ZDZ. FPX are going to start Baron up once again. Weiwei, can he make the miracle happen? No blast cone, no flash to clear that wall. It's going to be a dangerous push in for him as Gala jumps in forward. comes in, catches onto one with the headbutt. ZDZ comes in onto the flank. Zucker, no Nars to speak of, but that doesn't matter because the brand goes down. ZDZ kills Zucker in response, but it's a two for one in favor of LNG. ZDZ gets caught by the pole. Life is trying to keep his mid lane alive and somehow they get away, but LNG, they might just move to Baron now. I think they can do. They do have the Zyra. That is just your free Baron card. And LNG find themselves the late game fight, which they've been struggling to do so against FPX in this series. FPX, the overstate, they are looking for a contest. They don't have their Ash. They only have their Corky in terms of damage. This will just be some Safari League of Legends watching the local wildlife. Baron gets taken by LNG, and they walk away very, very happy with that one. Dragon is up and available, but it would only be the second Dragon for FPX this time. Earlier in the game, LNG took a second dragon but it was at the cost of the mid lane inhibitor that felt bad no fpx find themselves in the mirror of that situation giving up that baron giving up potentially what could be a game changing objective to lng for just that second dragon of their own uh, um this is the power of warmogs and support he chunked out hung what, what does it matter he's almost full hp again uses that aftershock gets himself out fine and yes it's not going to be the huge combo throughout everything but it's enough it opens up the door for um, LNG to get themselves the big team fight. ZGZ gets one on the back part of this too, but LNG breaking things open well and truly for themselves. And there was a big play there where we saw Care Teleport very high up in mid lane, and he positioned as if he was moving towards the uh, the inhibitor, but then it felt like the cooler had pulled him back towards Baron. I think they could have taken an inhibitor in time. Corky is going to absolutely melt through that at this point in the game, uh, but it felt like FPX decided they thought there was a world they could try and stop the Baron, and then I think mm. they got to Baron, saw the health bars, and realized Wait. that they were not low enough for a tidy up, and uh, just had to kind of cool it, and I think they could have taken in here, which would have brought some pressure for them. Uh, regardless, though, weren't able to quite find that, as uh, Scout just going to do some work to this tower here. Should be able to cut this down very quickly on the Lucian, Zucker. as uh, Zucker, Sterix burnt to get himself the chase in. Are they going to find that gold card? ZDZ is able to connect it. Zucker goes down. FBX take Baron off one, but Scout, he's just cracking open the base. No one's there to stop it because the rest of his team are getting run down. But the Pyroclasm is oh. doing so much work. Hung finds himself caught out by Dekdam as he's just trying to put a little bit of damage into him. Dekdam can't finish anything else up. Scout's moved over. Mid lane in hip goes down. Brand falls. FPX starting to lose their grip on this game. Yeah, LNG have a juggler this time. They don't have a niddly. That's done nothing in the game. Weiwei way, consistently getting damage onto important targets in all of the important moments. So many of these uh, 
these roots and these alts coming oh, through no. to the huge damage. ZD's now overstayed. Potentially, he's not going to get spotted out just yet. He might be recalling. Oh, he's still on the pink. He's, spot okay. he's, he's spotted now. That could be a bit of an issue. Yeah, he's been spotted. He doesn't know that he's been spotted either. They know he's in the alcove. He's going to die. And he's caught. There it is. The end of day. He's delivered into the team. Gold car comes in, but that pink ward. There's never a pink ward there. Why would you expect <laughs> a pink ward at 33 minutes to be in that push? But it was. Weird. They'll do your help, but they're thankful for that one. They can use that for the flank teleport on the NAR. They could use that for whatever. They could use that for side lanes to punish someone like CDZ, who is now, you know, he's ahead in terms of gold, but what's he doing with that gold advantage? He gets himself that bot lane in a turret, and he gets himself the kill onto Zucker before that by comboing up um, in that bot lane. But LNG, uh, you can see now how much more confident they are that they're not stupidly far behind, that they do have an extra powerful member within that jungle. This Zyra has been absolutely critical to the way that they played the game and it's meant that FPX don't have um, just the easy run of these team fights. Uh, I will say Milky Way, despite the fact that he's down 1000 gold, is doing brand things all the same. If he gets himself a good team fight, there's every chance that FPX could get a miracle turnaround. Uh, it is going to be quite hard to ask though, because it feels like LNG, they're the ones which have been able to find the fights on their own footing, particularly once Hung gets himself that flashback. You got to feel that FPX have got to play very, very defensively. It's been hard for them to even play through stuff like the Ash Bomb combo. Typically you expect those Ash arrows to be accelerating the game. It's uh, getting harder now because uh, Hong can just body block it and you can use that ultimate to cleanse through it. You've got the Zonius as well in Weiwei which can stop a lot of those kill combos too and many of the other carries have got dashes on them so it's even harder to lock them down. Very, very hard to oh. make use of that combo in the way that they'd like. Yeah, losing so much health there as well as so that true shot barrage does feel like FX have been able to somewhat stem the bleeding from that Baron play. But they are struggling to leave their own base <laughs> as a counterpoint to that very yeah. point. Stem the bleeding by cutting off your arm. Yes, that that's great. Wow, we've just put a tonica on it. And uh, try to at least make sure it doesn't uh, lead to like the death of the game. Um, now we are getting to that point again where FBX are typically pretty good at angling in, into late game. We're at that 35 minutes mark, but um, it's really hard to do that when you've now got, you know, Scout that's very, very powerful in a 1v1. He has himself that QSS, so you can't even go onto him with a gold card very easily. I think that um, TF has been nerfed in the AD variety to an extent, which means that particularly against Lucian in a straight 1v1, oh, no. it is not easy. Dock down flashes. He does it again. A beautiful flash, but Weiwei comes in with the strangle forms. They're trying to keep him alive. The flank teleport from Zucker, though, should just shut him down. Milky Way gets some damage off onto Zucker. Pyroclasm is going to tear through LNG. Care's doing a lot of work here as they're all going low. The Care's able to get the himself passive. the damage, but the passive damage from Milky Way has saved the day. What a play by Milky. He he is absolutely liquefying health bars left, right, and center. Cares chasing forwards. Scout has to jump over the wall to safety. He continues to be chased by Care. I don't know how they, they did that, him. but Brand is such an OP champ. Oh, Milky Way is like Daenerys and King's Landing. Burn it all. The passive gets so much work. It's another game where Brand just tears apart the team fights. And LNG, despite being control, despite having the reins in this game, might have just lost 0-2 to Fun Plus Phoenix. And they're not done. They're going for a little bit more damage onto Scout. He is caught. He is cooked. Down he goes. The Nexus falls. What? FPX 2-0 LNG. The upset is complete. What do we say? 30, 35 minutes. It is the Fun Plus Phoenix comfort zone. Late game, late game inspiration from FPX once again. Milky Way gets himself the combo. And that was Alpha of Dark Time getting caught. How the hell does it turn into that? LNG, they lose their minds after they kill the AD carry and they forget that if you go into a choke point, if you get that pyroclasm bouncing between you, the game should just end. This is why Brand is so, so powerful right now. If, you are te if your teams, if your favorite teams are not playing Brand, show them that clip. They should have lost that. No other champion in the game could do what Brand just did just there. He, uh, his, his passive absolutely shreds through the team. Yes, it is predicated by the fact that LNG disrespected going into the choke point and that led to that bounce going across everyone. And I think that they really disrespected the fact that the passive hitting onto multiple people would do that much damage, but it works away, and Milky Way saves the day once again for Fun Plus Phoenix. Fires and Phoenixes do tend to go